Today we're going to be taking another look at GIMP. So if you haven't seen the last video, I took a basic look at what GIMP is. I will link it down below. But in this video, I will take a look at uh, some more functionality and a few effects as well. So the first one we have here is Hue. So if you haven't seen the last video, this is the image we are manipulating. And um, this is going to be the image that we have edited. But the first function we're going to be taking a look at here is the color function. So this is really powerful. It has probably 20 or some different options. I'm just going to be taking a look at two of them, but they're going to be structured the same way. So the first one we're going to take a look at here is the hue. So this will change the hue. So you can go from negative 360 to positive 360. So let's take a look at what that would do to an image. And if we open the edited image, you can see that it's purple and the original is green-ish. The next one here is lightened. So what that does is that that will lighten the image. So that goes from 0 to 100. So if we run that, you can see the image has been lightened. Now we can obviously combine these functions here. So we'll get a, both a hue and a lightened effect. And you can see the image. So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so the next one is manual image manipulation because you can obviously also do this in GIMP. So you can use the scan method to grab an area of an image. In this case, I'm grabbing the entire image. So I'm grabbing from zero, zero. So that is, would be the corner up here. And then to the width and the height, that would be this corner down here. So I'm drawing a rectangle and getting the pixels from here to here. You could obviously have modified these and I will show you in a bit uh, what happens when you modify those parameters. Then you will get for each pixel, you get an X and a Y and then you will get this ID, which is the pixel location. And then to get the different uh, colors, you'll just add one and to get the alpha as well, you also add one. So you can see how I'm grabbing them here. And then I do a basic if statement. If X is less than Y, then I will set the red pixel to 255, which will set it to full red. And you can see the edited image here draws a line down through the image, but you could obviously have implemented any algorithm. You could even have said this color here, I want to change to a different color or this color here. If we flip this here, you can see that we would get the opposite effect. So we would get it drawn up here. But let's change that back. Now the image width and height, you can see that this effect goes from here to here. So let's say I minus 100. You can see that cuts it off down here. And so you can see how you can pick area. So let's say you only wanted to affect this area here. But in this case, we're just grabbing the entire image. The next thing I want to take a look at here is a ghost effect. So the way I do this ghost effect here is that I grab the image up here and I make a clone of it and then I use compose. I take this so you can see what this does this is the X and the Y. So that's where it takes the so how much it's going to move the image. So what this is going to do is take two images and put them on top of each other. And essentially, I'm just specifying up here the new X and Y for the image that's going to be laying on top, which is going to be image two in this case. Then I specify the mode. So this would be the mode how it's going to blend these two. And then I'm specifying the opacity for the both the source and the destination. Let's try running this. And then we'll get a ghost effect. So the next one here is an emboss effect, which if you don't know, looks like this. So you've probably seen this effect before. So that's also an effect you can run. I believe this is used for edge detection. I'm not completely sure on that. The next I want to take a look at is a few built-in methods that can help you convert colors from one format to another format. I'm not going to show you these working, so they just convert uh, different colors to different uh, color types. The last thing I'm going to quickly explain is just if you want to start off with an empty image. So you can also do that by just doing GIMP and then the width and the height and then the background color. So every pixel will be set to this pixel. The reason why this is a bit long is because I think the alpha value is on here. So the first one here you can just ignore, but it's going to be red FFF, which is 255, and then no green, no blue, and then alpha value is going to be 255. So that was a little extra look at Jim. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.